Semeno, hello, I am Nara, and today we are going to be doing <laughs> some story time and yeah. also talking about the Mingo what, yeah, what is it the called? The Mongolian. Uh, Marimhor. Yeah, Marimhor. Yeah, Mongolian music instrument. Yeah, Mongolian musical instrument. Yeah. It's like a type of Mongolian violin. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like this. I got this at a prize when we went to Sydney. Yeah. yeah. So today, what Nara is going to do is. Now I got a book, very good, cool, nice book. Would you want to show the book? It's Sukha's White Horse. And then, the, what's the name of the book, Miniko? Sukha's White Horse. Yeah, Sukha's White white Horse. Yeah. Yeah, this is, is going to talk about how this music instrument was, been, was invented. Invented, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think this was the way of it. it was invented, just a storytelling. Yeah, way. this is the one story, yeah? yeah. Well known in Mongolia. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now Nara. Yeah. Yes, this is Suha's White Horse. Yeah. A Mongolian folktale. To the north of China in Mongolia extends a broad grassy plain. The people who live there have kept sheep, cattle, and horses for many ages. Here in Mongolia, they have a musical instrument called the Morunkhor. Morunkhor. Yeah, Morunkhor. Or the Horse Head Reb Rebek. I think I pronounced that correctly. It is so called because the upper part of it is shaped like a horse's head. Now, how did this musical instrument come to be invented? There is a story about it that goes like this. Long ago, a poor shepherd yeah. boy... Suche yeah, lived in yeah. the grassy plains of Mongolia. He lived with his aged, gr aged grandmother, just the two of them together. He worked as hard as any grown-up. He woke up early m every morning and helped his grandmother cook breakfast. Then he would take them more than 20 sheep out into the broad, wide plains. Suche was a very good singer and often sang when asked to by the other shepherds. His beautiful singing voice would ring out across the plain and far into the distance. Then one day, the sun had already set beyond the distant mountains and it was fast getting dark all around. Suhe did not come home. His, grandma was, his grandmother was beside herself with worry. The shepherds who living nearby also wondered what had happened and began to be alarmed. When we all were beside themselves with worry, Suhe came running up, holding in, his arm, holding in his arms something white. They all ran up close to him and saw that it was a small, newly born white foal. Suhe explained to all of them, smiling happily. On my way home, I found this foal. He had fallen to the ground and lay there wriggling. I looked around, but I saw no one who looked like the owner of the mother and no mother horse. If I left him there, he might be eaten by the wolves at night, so I brought him with me. The days went by one day at a time. Thanks to the way Suhe put his whole heart into caring for him, the foal grew big and strong. His coat was white as snow, his body trim and well knit, so that everyone gazed in rapture in spite of themselves. Suhe loved his, this horse with all his heart. Mm. One night, Suhe woke up woke from sleep with a start. He heard the shrill whinnying of a horse and the sound of a disturbance among the sheep. He leapt out of bed and outside and ran to the sheepfold. He saw a large wolf trying to attack the sheep, and the small white horse stood before the wolf, frantically staving it off. Sulher chased the wolf away and ran close to the white horse. The horse's whole body was soaking wet with sweat. He must have fought the wolf alone for quite a long while. As he rubbed sweaty white horse, Suhe spoke to him as if to a brother. You did well, white horse. Thank you so much. Time flew by. In the spring of a certain year, word spread all over the plains. The Noyon, or local ruler of those parts, was having a horse race in town, and the man who came in first was to marry the Noyon's daughter. When they heard this message, his fellow shepherds urged Suhe, by all, by all means try riding the white horse in the race. So he got on his beloved white horse and crossed the broad white plain, heading from the town where the race was being held. This is a picture of the town. 
At the racetrack were gathered a great many spectators. The Norian had in in scons and uh, in scons. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Himself on a dais. The race began. Strong young men came together from all over the country, flourished their leather whips as one. The horses ran as if they flew, and in the lead was the white horse. The white horse with Sukha on him. The white horse came in first. Bring me the rider of the white horse, the Norman cried. But when he looked at the young man they brought to him, he saw only a poor shepherd. So the ruler pretended to know nothing of his promise to make him his son-in-law and said, I will give you the three pieces of silver. Leave that white horse here and get back to where you came from fast. Suhe lost his temper and forgetting himself answered back, I came to race my horse, not to sell him. What, you miserable shepherd? How dare you cross me? Men beat him up good. The Noyan exploded and his retainers all set upon Suhe, who was beaten and kicked by many men and lost consciousness. The ruler took the white horse away from him and, accompanied by his retainers, left proudly. Suhe, helped by his friends, barely managed to make his way back home. Suhe's body was all cuts and bruises. His grandmother tended him day and night. Thanks to her, after some days had passed, his wounds began to heal. Even so, the sorrow of having had the white horse taken from him would not fade, no matter what. I wonder how the white horse is doing, Suhe thought of nothing else. What had happened to the white horse? The Norn felt really good at having gotten hold of this superb horse, and having done so, he wanted to show, off, show him off to everyone. Therefore, one day he invited May guests over and gave a drinking party. Now he had decided that in the middle of this party, he would ride the white horse for the first time and show him to everyone. His retainers led the white horse in. The Norn mounted the horse. Then it happened. The white horse leapt up with fearsome energy. The ruler ruled, rolled off him down onto the ground. The white horse shook the reins out of his hands and began to run like the wind through the screeching crowd. The Noyon, struggling to get up, roared loudly at all around him. Quick, catch him. If you can't catch him, shoot him to death with your bows and arrows. His retainers drew their bows taut and let fly altogether. The arrows whistled as they flew. One after another, they sank into the back of the white horse. Even so, the white horse kept on running. The same, the same, that same night, as Sulha was about to go to bed, suddenly there came a sound from outside. Who is it? he asked, but there was no answer. Clack, clack, clack. The sound continued. His grandmother, who had gone outside to see what it was, let out a cry. It's the white horse. It's our white horse. Sulha leapt up and ran out. He looked and saw that, in fact, the white horse was really there, but there were ever so many arrows stuck, stuck in his body and the sweat flowed as if from a waterfall. The white horse was young and had ran and ran and ran even with those awful wounds. He had come home to his beloved Suha. So her grievous teeth and forcing himself to bear the ache, pulled out the arrows that were stuck in his horse. Blood spurted from the wounds. White horse, my dear white horse, please don't die. But the white horse was thoroughly worn out. His breath gradually became faint and the light faded from his eyes. The next day, the white horse died. For sorrow and chagrin, Suha could not sleep for many nights. Then finally he do dozed off one night. He dreamed of the white horse. Suha stroked him and the white horse rubbed his body up against his master and he spoke gently to him. Don't mourn so. It would be better to make a musical instrument out of my bones, hide sinews and hair. That way I can always be beside you. I can comfort you. As soon as he awoke from the stream, Suha began to make the musical instrument. Just as the white horse had taught him in the dream, he put together the bones, hide sinews and hair as if possessed. The musical instrument was finished. This was the Moran the horse head rebbe. Suha took his Moran with him wherever he went. Each time he played, he remembered his chagrin at seeing the white horse killed and the joy of racing across the plains on him. And he felt as if the white horse was, were right beside him. At times like that, the instrument's music resounded more beautifully than ever, moving the hearts of all who listened. 
In time, the Monho Suche invented spread all across the broad Mongolian plain, and the shepherds would gather together in the evenings to listen men in intently to its beautiful notes and forget the toil of the day. That's it. Okay, we're back. Yes, we're back. <laughs> yeah, Nara had done a very great work to yes, read the book. Yeah. So, by the way, so this is the culture time, yes. but yeah, we want to know how to s write yes. the Marinhor, the Mongolian music instrument, in yes. Mongolian script. It's yes. two words. Marin, Marin, Hor, Ho, Go, Marin, Hor. Marin. Horse. Yeah, mar means horse. Yeah. yeah. Hor is this type of music instrument. Like or violin. Called, yeah, hor. Yeah, yeah. hor. Marin hor. Marin hor. Yeah, right, like this. Marin hor. Just, can I use this one? Yep, sure. It is, mo oh, I, will not, I, will, I will not touch the back side. <laughs> no worry. Ma, in the Yeah, ma. Ma, ri, in. Yeah, it to get connected together will be coming. Marine. Marine. Oh, yeah, right. you wanna write it? Yeah. Marin, yeah. Yeah, this is how to write it. This Nara's one. Marin. Yeah. Marin. Yeah. Marin. Marin. Yeah. Hor. Let's write it. Hor. Hor is. Ho. 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 Go. Ur. This is the cushion. Yeah. Connected together will be coming. Ho, go, ir. We write ho, go, ir. We say hor. 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 Yeah, marine hor. Yeah. Yeah, hor, ho, go, ur, hor, 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 okay, so, yeah. all done? Yeah, and, yeah. bye! Yeah, this Nara made a special bye. Yes. Bye, stay. Bye, there. Yeah, see you next time. Bye, there.